Strategic Industries Minister Alexander Kamishin, Justice Minister Dennis Maliuska, Ecology Minister Ruslan Strelitz, Deputy Prime Minister for European and Euro-Atlantic Integration Ole Stefanishina, and Deputy Prime Minister and Reintegration Minister Irina Vereshchuk submitted their resignations to the Ukrainian Parliament, Chairman Ruslan Stefanchuk reported. Vitaly Koval, head of the State Property Fund of Ukraine, also submitted his resignation nine months after being in office. Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmitro Kuleba has resigned from the post of Ukrainian Foreign Minister. The Speaker of the Ukrainian Parliament Ruslan Stefanchuk informed the Verkhovna Rada that the diplomat's statement had been received in his Facebook account. According to Stefanchuk, Ukraine's Parliament will consider officials' resignations at one of the next plenary sessions. In the Ukrainian segment of social networks, there is an active discussion about what is behind such an urgent and synchronous resignation of several ministers. Some users saw a bad sign in Kaleba's demarche and are demanding an explanation from the supreme power. Explain to the people what is happening. Why are you silent? Or will it be like February 24th, people write. There is also a version that Kaleba's resignation is connected not so much with his colleagues in the cabinet of ministers, but with unpleasant events, when the head of the Polish government, Donald Tusk, responded to Kaleba's statements on a historical topic. Since 2022, there has been a lot of hostile negativity towards Kazakhstan in the Russian information space, and in 2024, it has become even more. One or another Russian talking head threatens the Kazakhs at least once a week with a hybrid or overt intervention. According to Obos Revitel media outlet and the group Information Resistance, we hear much more often from Russian propaganda talking heads about Kazakhstan. When a wave of protests swept across Kazakhstan in 2022, in addition to the so-called CSTO units, Russia also sent a landing force of its propagandists to the Republic, and then they spread narratives that were almost identical to those they had already spread before the invasion of Ukraine. In addition, the command of the CSTO contingent in Kazakhstan was assigned to the commander of the Russian airborne forces, Andrei Serdyukov. It was he who led the operation to occupy the Crimean Peninsula by Russia in 2014 and later the units of the Russian occupation forces in Donbass using the call sign Sedov. Kazakhstan's biggest problem with Russia is their shared 7,598.8 km border. It is the longest continuous border in the world and its control is a major problem. A breakthrough is possible at any location, but not any location will do. If Russia does not attempt to invade Kazakhstan, it will be carried out, according to the classic scheme, along highways and railways, especially along the latter, which will have to provide the main logistics and material and technical support of the troops. While the border with Russia is a vulnerable point due to its length, Kazakhstan's size is its trump card. Controlling such spaces is very difficult, and with a well-organized defense, it will be easier to wear down and exhaust the enemy, even if it has a numerical advantage. Although Russia is already exhausted by the war in Ukraine, it still represents a dangerous potential for small armies, which include the Kazakh one. It is noted that a weakened Russia itself will not be able to provide the necessary number of forces and means for an invasion of Kazakhstan. Depending on the goals and objectives at different stages, the Russian armed forces can use a contingent of up to 100 to 150,000 personnel divided into several groups of troops operating separately. But despite all its bellicose statements against Kazakhstan, it is clear that Russia will not be able to form such a group to achieve its goal, control of the capital. Even despite the less than ideal technical condition of the Kazakh army, its mechanized component, mainly represented by old Soviet equipment, the condition of the Russian army is not getting better, but even worse with each passing month. But still, the war in Ukraine has shown that in modern conditions, it is not even those who have quantitative superiority on the ground that dominate, but those who dominate in the air. Therefore, the creation of a storage base of FPV drones and the training of operators can become a serious help for the Kazakh army in case 
of not only an invasion from Russia, but also any other vector conflict. The constant threats from Russian talking heads against Kazakhstan do not pose any practical threat at this stage. Russia will not be able to sustain another war, which will require resources no less than the war in Ukraine. But in the medium term, it is possible that the Kremlin will launch a scenario in which another war could be started to distract attention from the failure in Ukraine, one that, in the opinion of the military political leadership of the Russian Federation, guarantees a quick victory 